Welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast in part 25 of our Dungeons & Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77, set in the capital city of Isordorex in the Second Dominion. The squad continues their race, and the true form of the demon lord Butterfield is revealed. All right. Uh, well, welcome. Uh, this is episode 468 of the Clive Barker Podcast and part 26 of the Jericho Squad Hell's Event Part 2. We can actually name this one in advance because we know what's going on. After the destruction of Midian. After the unraveling of the fugue. After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions. The Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. So this, uh, the squad learned about a race against the Hells set in Beatrix, and the souls of the whole team are in je jeopardy if they don't win the race. The team learned that Butterfield is a powerful demon who is a rival to Gaustus, Chertovir's patron. And so we're going to kind of rejoin right in the middle of the race. Ryan, you told me while we were doing last episode that there's like a race in Sedona where people just tumble down the, the hill and some people just disappear never to be seen again. Seward. Seward, not Sedona. Did I say Sedona? Yeah. Sorry. Seward. Yeah, race Alaska. Seward. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's it's in, around the 4th of July in Seward, Alaska. And, it, and uh, it's called Freedom. the Mountain Marathon. And people run. And it's so steep that people fall down and sometimes they get killed. <laughs> and they keep doing this every year. Every yeah. year. Okay. That's how they we weed have out the. Thing near Fairbanks yeah. where people pull skiers on snowmobiles in a race and lots of people get hurt or killed doing that every year too why does texas get a bad rap <laughs> i don't know that is that's crazy or i mean if you cut alaska in half texas would be the third largest state <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure he's not lying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think the Vrock was the one that went already last time. I think it attacked Chertovir. And then we've got some humans going. The exciting. Or humans or like NPC people doing the race. The, this this person in the back is getting around the other one i do have a logistics question about the race is this being televised uh just like that uh council meeting was or is this just just nothing uh, you saw no you didn't no. see anything like that okay you you have seen the um the announcer uh coaxial tasco riding on a motorcycle to get ahead of everybody to you know be at the finish line gotcha And then it's Riley's turn. Oh, jeez. Okay, Riley's staying in one spot. She's not being very helpful this time. Okay, who is that in front of Pageant Storm? You move. Butterfield. Oh, she's got a roll against Butterfield. Sweater. Okay, I think they're both plus nine, and that'll make her the uh, brown die, and, she'll, and he'll be the black die. Okay, so I think she got around him. She looks at him, 
but she doesn't uh, doesn't notice anything weird about him. So this one up at this guy up at the top is gonna move up one, and it's Richard's turn. Oh, you're uh, you're right in front of Bentley. Oh yeah. So you get to roll contested athletics check against Bentley to see if you can get ahead of him, or if you can pull away. I guess it would be twenty. Whoa. Is it natural 20 or is that like no i got 20? plus seven on athletics oh okay he's got plus uh 18 plus nine is 27 so you can't you can't get ahead of bentley but uh, everybody rolled high so we'll make you guys move up we'll both move up one space you both move up two spaces because you both got above 20 or 20 or, or higher um, so now that uh, that demon is just in between you and Chertovir, the the uh, vulture-looking one, and it's uh, it doesn't have a, a veneer of looking like a normal person anymore. It's just really look just looks like a vulture. Do you want to attack it? It's probably a good like twenty feet away from you. Did Chertovir already attack it? Yes, Chertovir is and kind of in the middle of a fight with it. I shall attack it. Okay, so let's... From the back. Well, from the back, he's facing Chertavir. I am going to um, move up towards him and attack him. My first action was going to move right up on him. Okay. And then I'm going to attack okay, with Cash Friar's old sword. And I rolled a 26. Wow, yeah, that hits. What's your damage? 14. Are you going to attack him again? I sure am. But I only roll a 15. That hits. Okay. That's exactly what you need with that guy. And 10. Okay. <laughs> he got a 15. 15 against 7. So he pulls ahead. I think there's one right behind uh, Musette. And it's going to try to pull a, around her. So, Musette, make an athletics check, and you got to beat a seven. Oh, uh, I got an 18 total. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, he does not get around you. And actually, he gets kind of mad, too. And so now he's going to attack you. So he thinks, well, if I can't get around you, I'll go through you. He's going to stab at you with a spear. That's uh, 20 to hit. So I am assuming that hits. Yeah, that definitely hits. You get speared for uh, five piercing damage. That's the end of his turn. Okay, the Barlgura, the big gorilla looking one that's still alive. One of them was killed by uh, Richard and Bentley, but there's one of them still alive. So he's trying to pull away from the knoll, and he's plus four, eight, and the knoll is plus three, and he's ten. So he can't. They're both stay, staying where they're at, and there's nobody around him to fight. So Butterfield is going to try to pull ahead of that knoll in front of him. Noel is 5. Butterfield is uh, 24, so he pulls ahead two spaces. This one. That one, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and he, he it looks he's not sweating. It looks pretty effortless. He's wearing a suit, and he kind of runs around you. Another regular racer person. Oh, wow, they both got natural 20s. Can you guys see that? I will say they both move up two spaces. And they're kind of neck and neck right there. This one is trying to get around Willem. And that's another Noel. It's a, like a hyena looking guy. Only fancier. He's got better equipment and stuff and he's bigger. He, wow. 21 against Willem 15. He gets up two spaces and gets kind of in front of Willem. And he's, he's pulling up 
against uh, Cheerto Beer. Hey. Yeah, I know. Now it's Willem's turn. And Willem changes into his spider form and starts attacking that uh, that knoll. So that's going to be kind of right behind uh, Cheerto Beer. So the knoll is in the space up and to the left of him, of Cheerto Beer, and uh, Willem is behind that. Mm-hmm. He's going to do two bite attacks. So that's 11, to, it's, uh, 19 to hit. That hits, and whoa, 10. So one of them misses. And he does seven piercing damage. And this guy has to make a save against being poisoned. He made it. He did not get poisoned. All right. And next is Ralph's turn. Hello. <laughs> and Ralph, all you have to do is uh, to to run in the race. You just need to make an athletics check to see if you move one or two spaces or zero spaces. Okay. Because you've got oh, nobody we... around you anymore. Bingo. Yeah, athletics plus one. Five. Okay. Plus five. Yep, you you uh, you stay where you're at in relation to everybody else. And Ralph can't run. <laughs> hmm. Ralph wants to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Warlock is charisma based instead of athletic. All right, so Julian Sand showed us all that. Yeah. The thing that I always remember about that movie is is um him not it like it was like in Bugs Bunny, you know, where you don't know that you're falling off a cliff until you look down, and he didn't know that he had been injected with salt water until she told him. <laughs> <laughs> I like that movie. And then he did. He, so then he, she's like, he's like, oh, like your insulin's gonna do anything to me? And she says, try salt water. And he goes, what? And then he explodes. <laughs> That's a fun one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Oh yeah, the the um, the maw demons. It's gonna roll athletics against Anastasia. So and uh, Anastasia rolled an athletics check. This you gotta beat a seven, or he's gonna pull away from you. <laughs> One. Is that, wow. Natural one? <laughs> yes. Okay. I think he succeeded in pulling away. I think he succeeded as well. <laughs> yeah. He was right in front of you. If you want to get an attack of opportunity, you can. I think you've seen that one already. That come with your ladle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should. Uh, actually, um, one of my attacks of opportunity... Well, no, I have to. I have to take damage from him. Within ten feet. Never mind. Uh, yeah, go. Let, let's try this. You know, just taking a swing. I mean, okay. he's right there. Yeah, roll to hit. Uh, okay. But that one's already kind of beat up too. Ten. Um, that doesn't hit. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay. I tried. You don't have a weapon. You just have your. You just have punching. I do, but I've been shooting him the last episode, so I thought, you know, oh, change okay. it up a little bit. Might get lucky. Well, I thought you had um, your your main, like, dagger uh, on. Yeah, I've got my daggers, I've got my automatic, but I, I okay. shot him last time, so I think, okay. if I remember correctly. You also okay. have your spiritual weapon cast. Yeah, and the, the spiritual weapon is still cast. All right, and the other... Maw demon is going to try to pull away from that person. He's probably just going to let it go because he's a little freaked out that this person that was in front of him turned into this monster with four legs and eyes all over it and a big mouth in the center of its body. And it pulls up uh, in front of Willem and it's going to attack him. It can bite. 
which is plus four to hit. Thirteen, that misses. You guys are cool. Okay, they both kind of stayed in the same spot. And Zoe's turn. Okay. I need Anastasia. It still says Zoe on the combat track. Okay. Um, because on mine it has both, but anyway. Uh, I'm kind of mad at that Maw Demon for running away from me, so I want to try to catch up to him. Okay. Uh, make athletics an athletics check. check. Yeah. Eleven. Okay. And I'll put you up against this other... Yep, you stay in the same spot. Yeah. But you can see how far away he is up on the, um, on the map here. So, what does that mean? Five, ten, fifteen. Five, I got ten, plenty of 15, attacks 20. that'll, and spells tw- that'll hit him from there. Yeah, he's, tw- he's 25 feet away. So if you want to blast him, you can. Well, let me do this. Let me do... Guiding Bolt le- level 3. Okay. Yeah, roll to hit. 15. That hits. Cool. Yeah, roll your damage. This will probably kill him. 15. Yeah, he had 12 hit points. That, that guy is dead. Yes! <laughs> I will put him in my stew. Yes. <laughs> oh, you know what? And and we don't want your uh, spiritual weapon to get behind, so it will make athletics checks with. So use the modifier, and so add that to a twenty, and that's what it's. Uh... What is it with these natural ones? Okay, oh, so okay. five. Yeah, so it, it doesn't move. No. Okay. All right, and that's the end of that round. So Bentley is up next. Where in, there he is. Okay, he's, he doesn't have really any enemies in front of him. I'll see if he notices that this Noel is attacking. He's attacking and use that, or if he just keeps running. Yeah, no, he got a natural one, so he doesn't notice that. He's just gonna keep running. And he's pretty beat up. Whoever thought that natural ones were contagious. <laughs> yeah. All right, so he's going to make an athletics check against Richard to try to get ahead of him. So, Richard, make your athletics check. You got to beat a 28. Not happening. I rolled a 12. Oh, okay. So, Bentley gets ahead. I root him on and encourage him as he passes me. Yeah, now, get it, now buddy. Bentley's in, in the lead on the whole race. Uh, next is Chertovir's turn. And you've got this uh, rock kind of in front of you that you've been battling with. So it's my turn and I'm supposed to attack that thing in front of me? Uh, you're supposed to do whatever you want to do. Okay. Well, I'm uh, I'm still running. And I see Richard is ahead of me. Bentley is ahead of me. And there's this guy who's been attacking me to my right, Correct. Yeah, and he's to your right and ahead of you. It's kind of hard to see on because it blends in with the background a little bit. Mm. And we have been in combat, right? Yeah, yeah, you've right. already fought with him. All right, I'm going to send a. Spe- I'm going to cast a spell. Okay. Um, let me see if I can uh, figure this one out. Because I've already tried that Maximilian's Earthen Grasp, but uh, that didn't work very well. It worked, but he got out of it after the first round. Yeah. How about... I can make a creature. I can use enlarge or reduce. That is... That is a second level spell. It says here, concentration up to one minute. Uh, I can cause a creature or object I can see within range to grow larger or smaller. I'm trying to win a race here, so I think I'm going to try to make him smaller so his legs are smaller, so he can't run as fast. Well, isn't the uh, hand still out there and you're still concentrating on it? Well, I, I, I think guess the, the hand... Con- right? It's not... You don't lose concentration just because he let go of him. I think the hand is still stand, sitting there. 
Yeah, but it's back there, right? We keep on moving forward. So the hand is back there. Is, is it? Or I? Yeah, okay. It comes out of the ground, grabs it. If the guy escapes and keeps running, the hand just kind of stays on the floor, right? Yeah, so you can drop concentration on it if you want then. Yeah. So I'm going to try casting this uh, Reduce. If the okay. target is a creature, everything it is wearing and carrying changes sizes with it. Any item dropped by an affected creature returns to normal size at once. So I'm going to reduce it. Um, okay. Its weight is going to be reduced to one-eighth of normal, and that reduces the size by one category from medium to small, for example. Until the spell ends, the target also okay. has disadvantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. The so weapon also, also shrink. means its athletics checks will be at disadvantage for trying to run. Right. And uh, the target's weapons also shrink to match new size. While the weapons are reduced, the target attacks with them deal 1d4 less damage. This can't reduce the damage below 1. So it's also going to affect how many points it can hit because the target's okay, so attacks yeah. will deal a 4 uh, dice less damage. So what's the saving throw for it? Constitution, Constitution. 15, attack save, yes. Okay, so he got... Uh... 19. Oh, so that means that he uh, he didn't get in reduced? No. No, he, he passed. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I tried. I'm going to keep on okay. running. Are you going to... So, are you, you got to make an athletics check against him to get around him. Athletics check. Sure. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. So... He hey, I got a 21. Oh, you can move two ahead of him. Nice. Let me do that. So you got to do okay. your full movement, which is like 25 or 30, whatever it is, uh, on the battle map, and then move two spaces on the on the race one. Beep. There we go. I moved, and then the other one, I also moved two, two squares? Like that? Yeah. Okay, so where did I... Oh, there I am. Okay, so I was here. What's your... Yeah, what's your movement? Walking speed, 30 feet. Okay, so you can go so... 30. I can go 30. Okay, just yeah, one. It, it's going to take a swipe at you with an attack of opportunity as you there. fly. Okay, I moved. And Thank it's, you for the arrow, Rob. It's going to do a talon attack. It swipes at you with its claws. Oh, wow. Did I, so 14 plus 6 is 20 to hit. Damn. Didn't I have, like, uh, protection from good and evil and uh, mage armor? Okay, so, well, mage armor we, is part of your armor class. Well, what's okay. the, it's not going to get you above 20. But what's the right. uh, protection of good and evil? Does that make it attack you at disadvantage? It's a fiend. Is it? A, it do fiends have disadvantage? Yep. Just, yeah, yep. okay. All right. Whoa. That was even better. So he still attacks you. Okay. 23 damage. Yikes. 23. I still had two points from that... Uh extra uh, extra damage points so i took oh, two okay. of those and then how many how many did you say 23 23 total yeah you can just oh, put wow. in 23 and it'll subtract that first wow okay i'm at 52 points now yeah yikes those talons yeah. were sharp yeah it actually gets its turn now 13 so it gets to move ahead uh we'll make an athletics check and see if you can beat a 13 See if it pulls ahead of you or stays behind. Me? Yeah. Sure to athletics here. check. Yes, sir. I've got athletics check of 19 plus 1 equals 20. Okay, so it stays behind you. Man, I'm pulling up ahead. I like a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but if he moves up there like that, can I opportunity attack him? Uh, Yeah, Was it, it was right below you, wasn't it? Yeah, because yeah, I melee had attacked him last turn. Yeah. You can. So roll to hit. 28. Oh, yeah, that totally hits. What's your damage? 12. Just like what it did to Chertovir, you, uh, it tries to run past you and you pull out your sword and s slash it across its wing. Yeah. And it runs up to Chertovir now, and it is going to stunning screech. Um, everyone within 20 feet of it that can hear that isn't a demon must succeed on a constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of its turn. 
Okay, so Ch so that's Chertavir. And that's it, just Chertavir. I gotta do a, what saving throw? Constitution saving throw. You have to beat a 14. 11? You failed, so you're stunned. Eee. Until okay. the end of his next turn. Okay, I'm stunned. All right. I think you made a mistake. I'm stunning, not stunned. Okay. And uh, uh, who did I give uh, Bardic Inspiration to at the beginning? Was it Trudevere and... Um, um, yeah, I don't know. Did you, guys, did you guys write it down? Who has stun Who has Bardic Inspiration? I'm pretty sure I gave Trudevere Bardic Inspiration as well. That yeah, seems to be the habit. It's so got to be because I don't yeah. have it. You, okay. Is that a plus eight or plus a D8 on his roll? Um, inspiration die one d ten. Okay, so and you can add a d ten to your to your roll, Jose. Ability check, attack oh. roll, or saving throw. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Once I, you I do remember. that, it's gone. But yeah. Bardic inspiration, so I can do a one d ten. I got an extra point one. Okay, so yeah, you still failed. You're still yeah. stunned. And okay. Your bardic inspiration is gone. Thank you, Muzet. Muzet is very disappointed at my rolling one. She's like, no. I, wa I wasted my spell for that. And it's Musette's turn. Uh, I got the Noel 11. Um, and he's like right behind me, and he's the one that attacked me. Yes, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to attack him first or try to run away first? Uh, you know what? I'm going to try to run away. Okay, he, he'll get an attack of opportunity if you do that. Ugh. Fine, I'll just attack him then. Okay. I'm gonna try to shoot him. If you shoot him at point blank range, it's at disadvantage. Whip. Okay. I. I think you have other weapons. Yeah. Can I use my warpful longsword? Yeah, I didn't. I forgot that you had that. Yeah. Well, I usually use spells. Because I stay far away from people. Okay, uh, yeah, roll roll to hit with your four pole longsword. Okay. Uh, I got 13 plus 7, I got 20 total. 20 total, okay. Yeah. Uh, roll damage. I seven. just... Seven. Yeah. Okay. Pageant Storm is next. Is she in the fight here? I don't think so, not yet. She's got this knoll in front of her. That's the one that's attacking Musette. So I guess first of all, she's going to roll against it to catch up. And she's a plus nine. 18 plus nine, that's pretty good. And it got a 19 plus. So they both get to move up to... Oh, well, actually, it's... Yeah, Musette, you did your attack, but are you going to, are you going to move also? I would like to move. Okay. Uh, roll, or do you want to get around Butterfield, or do you want to just pull away from the knoll? I just want to pull away from the knoll. Okay, uh, make an athletics check. Oh, six. <laughs> uh, he got a 16. So you're not able to get away from him. They, You both kind of stay in the same spot. And now Pageant Storm is, pull, is going two spaces ahead. Pulling up right next to Musette. So we'll put her on the battle map because she's going to attack that knoll. 16 plus 9 is 25 to hit. That's totally a hit. So she pulls out this flaming sword. Fire damage. So plus 4 is 13 fire damage from the first attack. I think she's going to kill this thing. And then the second one is she kills it. So the knoll behind Musette is dead. Yay! All right, that's the end of her turn. And we got one of these people. And now it's Richard's turn. All right, so I'm just going to keep running this race okay. and uh, start charging down the down the yeah. lane there. Ma yeah, make an athletics check. All right. Big money, big money, let's go. Yeah, and you're doing it against the Vrock, even though it's like a 19. 
Okay, and it got uh, 12 plus 9. Is that 21? So you're still kind of neck and neck with that guy. But you can move ahead um, to just even with it. All right, the and so then, yeah, I'm going to do so. Yeah, and you can attack it if you want. I definitely want to. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm going to grip my uh, my sword here with two hands. Okay. And I flash down on top of uh, oh, V-Rock. Yeah. <laughs> 28 definitely hits. With a 28. Mm-hmm. What's your damage? And I hit him for 14 damage. Okay. And you get one more attack, I think. So I do it again. And I okay. just strike it down with another 28. Wow. Yeah. And your damage? It's 13. Well, it's looking pretty beat up. This was one of the more powerful demons uh, of all of them. The Knolls. Which I think there's only one left now. Yeah. There we go. It's going to try to get ahead of the Barlguras again. That is not very good. And, yep, it stay, they, it kind of stays where it's at. And Barlguras turn. Now it's going to try to pull ahead. 4 is 11 against... Oh, nope, it doesn't, it doesn't manage to pull ahead either. Now it's Butterfield's turn. And it's going to try to pull ahead of... Pull away from Musette and get up kind of next to Richard. Okay, eight plus nine, 17. Yeah, so make an athletics check, uh, Musette. 17. Oh, that's exactly the same. So you guys kind of pull right up next to each other. Uh, it, he's kind of annoyed by you doing that, and he's going to try to uh, push you down. So make another athletics check. And where are the referees in this race? What, do you run races with referees? <laughs> I guess they, sh they should be people checking up what's going on. I guess there's no rules on this one. Okay. Uh, I got an was 18. there a referee in your race that you ran this morning? No. Well, you didn't run a race this morning. You just did a run. Yeah. But in races. No, no yeah. but I have been in races before. No, there's no refs. Okay. <laughs> I got okay. an 18. Bow. Okay. And he got uh, 23. So uh -huh. he, pushed you, he pushed you down. All right. That's a flagrant foul. Yeah. Yeah, other things are like are like trying to kill you, but you're like, but, but this guy just shoves you down. Rob, it is um, Johnny's turn. All right, he kind of stinking cloud in the middle of the front of the race. Okay, so is it this? This is on the battle map portion, then, right? So against uh, where Richard and Chertovir and the Vrock. So is that a constitution saving throw? Uh, so constitution 17. Okay. So yeah, uh, Chertovir and Richard make a constitution saving throw. Okie dokie. So that's a fail. I got a 12. Also fail. Um, so... Rob, I think Stinking Cloud, don't they? Uh... Whoa, that guy's moving. Johnny is moving. I didn't think that we could have ones that could move. Apparently there are some that do. <laughs> okay. So what happens with Stinking Cloud if they fail their constitution saving throws? Um, They're poisoned condition to start with. Okay. And then... That stinks, bro. Just telling you now. Yeah. That's nasty. You can't take an action or a bonus action also while poisoned. And they have to make a new save every round? No, it's it la it just lasts till the end of their their current turn. And then if they're still in the cloud, they have to make the 
save again. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So it depends on whether we move out of the cloud radius and stuff? Yeah, but for right now, you're poisoned until the end of your next turn. So spell basically, po- they just ripped one right in front of us. No, it's a spell. Right. Sure, it's a but spell. But that, that, uh-huh. it's the exact same effect. I mean, note to self, next time someone cuts the cheese, do a constitution saving it's not throw. A- <laughs> Poison gives disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. It's not a spell, yeah. it's a smell. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're poisoned. So all their athletics checks will be with disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys, all of a sudden, you see this guy just sort of appear. And he uh, and he casts a spell on, on you to, to create this stinking cloud uh, around you guys. And he's in the lead on the race. Has, has Johnny always been in the race? Uh, this is the first time you've noticed him. Huh. I, well, I guess make a um, make an intelligence check. Twelve. You're not a hundred percent sure because you didn't really um, you didn't look at every single racer, but you don't remember seeing him before. This might yeah. be the first time. You Did he just him. run into the race? Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm I'm suspicious. I'm like, hey, yeah. where did he come from? And boy, does it smell. Yeah. That knoll that's up at the top of this in the battle map, the the um, the green looking one next to Willem, it's gonna start trying to bash Willem, and it makes three attacks. One bite and two claws. So fifteen to hit. That misses. And 18 plus 5 is 20, whatever. That hits. 20, 1d8 plus 3. So Willem's taking some damage. 4 damage to Willem. And one more. One more claw attack. Miss a miss. Okay. And that's it for its turn. Oh, well, it's going to. Make an athletics check against Willem to pull away. Natural 20. And Willem got a 19 plus... What is his? Plus 2. So it moves. It it is able to move. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. It's going to go right up to the edge of the cloud and stop. And then Willem gets an attack of opportunity. A to 60. No, it hits. Okay. Well, he bites at him. Two, six damage. And it has to make a save against getting poisoned. 11 constitution save. Seven plus. Okay. One is eight. It failed. So it takes 2d8 poison damage from his bite. It's lucky that all the action seems to be happening way way up at the front of the race. So all these people don't even know what's going on. They're just trying to run. Okay, that one is pulling ahead a little bit. And then it's Willem's turn again. Willem is really mad at that stupid no thing and be no goose. So he's going to run up there and and uh, do his multi-attack against him. 18 to hit is a hit. And this is another bite attack. So 10 damage. And he has to make another constitution saving throw against poison damage. That passed, so he doesn't take the poison damage. He's going to try to web him in place so he can't move. Natural what? So I guess he webbed himself in place. His his uh, his web shooter went off. Okay, so Will, Willem's kind of stuck in in place. Don't and worry, uh, Willem. It happens to a lot of spiders. And it's um, Ralph's turn. And Ralph, ah. you can just make an athletics check against nobody, uh, and because there's nobody around you, and and see if you can make 
uh, go one or two spaces or zero? I rolled a seven. Seven total? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're still in the same place. Nice. All right. And Ralph's just going for a walk. I was honestly hoping someone would have attacked me, but everyone's now just ahead of me, so no one will oh, attack yeah. me. <laughs> They're running away from you. Um, where are we at now? Oh, yeah, the Maw Demon. So the one who's still alive, Rob pointed out that no one has seen him yet. So he's going to make an athletics check against one of these people. Natural one, so he doesn't move. Also gets a natural one and doesn't move. And it will get it. Now it's his turn. He got an 18. He's going to run up. Right beside it, and it's gonna he's gonna take a good look at him. Natural twenty, so he sees what uh he sees the maw demon for what it is. You know, this slavering uh four legged creature with that's all mouth and eyes. And uh he's gonna make a saving throw against taking damage. Two psychic damage. So he doesn't die, but it hurts him. And now it is Anastasia's turn. Okay. I want to try to catch up to that maw demon. Okay. So let me do my athletics check. Seven. Okay. And against... Okay. Yeah, you don't move. But yeah. um, do you want to... Let's see. How far uh, ahead would How far am I from him? Because he's... Yeah, let's see if we can... Where is he on the map? Because I don't remember seeing him. He... Yeah, he hasn't... A packed or anything yet oh right yeah rob's got him so well he's within my distance so well let's see where is that i've got plenty of spells that go 120 feet he's definitely within my feet is that about my spell right range. to where yeah yeah that's where rob put him that's where he is okay and now and now uh he's been revealed well do you want to you have you don't know, I guess, that he's a demon yet. You, so do you want to look at him first and figure well, it out? Well, I I probably would have seen that guy going crazy just from looking at him and suspected something. That's true. Yeah. Do I still have to do a insight saving throw? Or? Um, no. Or perception, you, I mean. You, you, you don't have to. You can if you want. Okay. Well, I'm going to put two and two together and just figure that, you know, just looking at somebody is enough to make you go crazy in the head. So that's yeah. probably something that I need to go after. Okay. So let's go ahead and do Guiding Bolt third level. Okay. Uh, yeah, roll to hit. 21. That totally hits. You roll your damage. Guiding Bolt. 27. Oh, my gosh. You blasted the crap out of it, and it changes. Woo! Yeah. Uh, so everybody can see it now for what it is, and it's it's hurt pretty badly. It's got one of its legs is is kind of hanging off, just by a sinew. Ooh. And it's it's bleeding uh, black gore all over the ground, and it's kind of yeah. dragging itself. All right. Um. So, and you did your uh, your athletics check to run already. Yeah. Okay, so next up is top of the round with Bentley. Where is Bentley? Oh, he's right at the edge of that cloud. And Rob, they can see the cloud, right? Yeah, it's visible. Huh. Okay, and he's like at the he he's kind of at at a park right there on the side of the road. I think he's gonna try to get around get he's gonna make an athletics check to try to you know climb over fences and get around this 15 athletics check yeah so he's gonna he's gonna just kind of go through here and get around and that kind of cuts his movement in half so he makes it to right there Chertovir's turn all right you're in the in the stinking cloud yeah yeah, so, um... Oh, and, you, wait, well, you were stunned. I was stunned, yes. So this is your first turn being stunned, so you can't move. Okay. Uh, so until, I'm just kind of, like, going like, uh yeah. oh, this smells making me dizzy. Yeah. Okay. 
Can I do anything? I'm trying to think of what you could do. Yeah, what do you want to do? You, you can't move because you're stunned. I think when hmm. you're... What is the stunned condition? I don't... Uh, it says he's incapacitated, can't move, and can speak falteringly. Fails yeah. strength and dexterity saving throws. And he, people have advantage on attack against him. Okay. Can I try to do a, a spell that involves concentration when I'm stunned? I can't cast any spells i can't move i can speak falteringly yeah i think you're pretty much stuck yeah i mean i could just pull out my sword and try to wave it around but i might hit someone <laughs> i don't yeah, know and, and that's until the end of the vrox next turn okay well i guess i just i can i raise my mantle up to my mouth to see if i can like block the smell of the cloud it's yeah but it doesn't it know. doesn't do any good right Okay. Like, yeah, and... this this doesn't really help, guys. This doesn't really help <laughs> yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah. And now it's the Vrox's turn. It's immune from being poisoned. Uh, oh, the Vrock is also. Okay. He has he so he has advantage on attacking Trudelvir because of being stunned. So that's what he's gonna focus on. So he's gonna first attack with his beak. Uh, nine plus six is 15 to hit. What is your armor class with the... Oh, and he has disadvantage because of the... So it's just a regular attack. I mean, a regular... I'm going to roll again. I forgot about the... Um, you're being blessed, right? Or a protection from good and evil. So advantage and disadvantage... They cancel each other out. So this is a regular attack roll, so we're starting it over again. And 17 to hit. I think that hits even with your mage armor. Right? What is your armor class with the mage armor? Yeah. Uh, I was saying I have an armor class of 15. And... Um... Okay. Yeah, 17. Yeah. So it hits. 2d6 plus 3... Beak damage. Yeah. So three, six, six damage from his beak. And then uh, Talon attack. 17 plus six is a hit. And that's 2d10 plus three. 11 more damage from Talon's. So 17 damage? Yeah, and then one more. Jesus. 17 plus six is a hit. Plus three is five more piercing damage, slashing damage. Eight, uh, 17 plus five, 23. Yep. Okay. 23 points of damage. All right. And it is going to make an athletics check. It automatically passes against Trudelvir, uh, to go around you on your left side. Babe. And that's 14 plus... Three, six, 17, so it's going to go ahead of you. And its full movement is 40, so he's going to go... Ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, 30, 35, 40, right there. Okay. And, um, Richard, you get an attack of opportunity with disadvantage because of the stinking cloud. Because Stink. it's... It's flying right. away from you. So I'll roll it twice and take the lower. Yeah. 26. <laughs> and 12. Oh, man. Yeah, the 12 misses. I just slash and I yeah. hit it. As he moves so fast away from me. Yeah. Okay. And in the race, that puts him in the lead. Oh, natural 20. So that guy moves up two, and it puts him kind of right in line with Pageant Storm and right behind Butterfield. Riley got, uh, so she got a 10. So she moves forward one, at least. Musette's turn. 
Means that you have Butterfield to the side of you. you. You're lying on the ground because he pushed you down. He tried to make it look natural. He kind of nudged you with his shoulder as he was running by, but he was clearly trying to knock you down. So it'll take half your movement to get up. And what do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to hurl Vicious Mockery at him. It is a Wisdom saving throw of 15. And then the uh, damage is 2d4. He's got plus 14 on his wisdom. Oh, so man. he got a tw- he got a 24. Oh, okay, so that failed. <laughs> okay. I guess. So what do you say to him to mock him? <laughs> hey, I'm running here! Okay. <laughs> there we go. Let's go with that. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you get up. Uh, yeah. Are you going to make an athletics check to try to get around him? Yeah, I need. I want to get away from him. Okay. Uh, twenty-one total. Um, and he got uh, nine plus nine is eighteen. So you got around him. Yay! So, what is your movement? Is it thirty? Um, or twenty-five? I believe so. Thirty. Okay, so you can go 15. We'll go to the next turn. It is Pageant Storm. That Maw Demon behind her is not dead. Yeah. It's just hurt really badly. So she's going to try to finish it off. Yay! So she's got plus 9 on her attack, so 25 that hits. So that killed it. Five, I think 15 damage and it had six hit points left. So that Maw Demon is dead. And now she's just going to make a regular athletics check against nobody to try to get ahead. Eight plus nine, 17, 17. So she did. She got ahead of him. There. And on the battle map, she moved up uh, 40. So that con- that stinking cloud is just concentration. It's never going to go away. Yeah, it's concentration up to one minute. 30, 35, 40. Okay. She's trying to go around it like Bentley did. Got a natural 20, so he moves up ahead of this other guy. And Richard's turn. Richard is in the stinking cloud. All right, so disadvantage on your athletics checks on and on any attacks that you. So, because you're. I guess to try to progress and use my. uh, And he can't take an action. Oh, you can't take an action. His action is spent coughing. Oh yeah. Okay. Or throwing up. So how do you get out of it like the V Rock did? You could well. He's immune to poison, but you can run. I mean, you you can just you could just um, use your movement to get out of it. I, I couldn't well, move. Well, because you're stunned. You stunned. Oh, I'm stunned. That's right. That's right. Well, I wasn't meaning any sort of action. I meant like, do I have to do an athletics check to be able to use my walking speed? No, the, the athletics check is just to try to get around other characters and stuff. Oh, okay. Well, then I am going to move. Yeah, what's your movement? 30, 5, okay. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay. All right, and you're out. Um, so at the end of your turn, at, you know, once you, at the end of your turn, you'll be you'll not be poisoned anymore. I think, right? He doesn't have to make a check for that. It just happens. Yeah. No, it ends at on his turn. Yeah. Okay. Oh, um, right. I guess that's it then. Yeah. He's kind of technically out of the... Yeah. Right there. Okay. Noel. The Baralgura moves up another two spaces. So it's like right beneath Musette. And it's going to start bashing on her. It's, it makes 
uh, three attacks, one bite and two fists attacks. Twelve probably doesn't hit. And sixteen plus seven. It's twenty something. I'm sure that hits. And thirteen plus seven is twenty. So two fist attacks. Yeah. So it punches Musette twice. You take ten Musette, you take ten damage. From bludgeoning from being punched by a gorilla. <laughs> That Ma Demon in right in the middle of the screen, that's the one I that uh, just died, right? Yeah, he's dead. Okay. Now it's Butterfield's turn. And he's he's uh he's gonna roll an athletics check to get around Musette. He's fifteen, Musette. We'll make an athletics check. Uh anyway, she rolled a sixteen plus two, sixteen eighteen. Okay. Fifteen. So he was not able to get around her. Nice. Yeah. He's getting mad. He's going to move here and do a lightning bolt against Musette, Chirgovir, and Richard. What the heck? Yeah. I'm running in. Musette's getting hit by a lightning bolt. Yeah. So make a um, dexterity saving throw, all three of you. He as well? Yeah. Okay. And 23, sure. baby. Natural 20. You got a natural 20? Yeah, but so 23. Moveset rolled a 22. Oh, wow. Okay. And Chirduvir? Is he still Six. stunned? I... No, the stun was over after that turn. Was it? Okay. Yeah. So... My dexterity... I rolled a 3 with a plus 3 modifier, so I got okay. 6. Okay. So... But, but and you're yeah well and you're also in the stinking cloud so I think you'd be yeah. making it with disadvantage. But I'm like gasping and puking, anyway, so it doesn't matter. So let's see, lightning bolt. So right now I'm still not not running, right? I'm still kind of like coming out of my stun, but still just disoriented by the cloud or something. Stumbling yeah, around. Yeah, you're still poison condition. Okay. 8d6 lightning damage. Well, everybody takes lightning damage, but the people who passed only take half. So 27 damage, uh, lightning damage to Chirdovir, oh, and half of that to uh, Musette and Richard. So 13 or 14? It's you, low, you round down, so 13. Okay. And I got how many? 27. Yikes, I'm just two points away from dying, guys. 27 damage. I've got two points. So Muset got 13 damage? Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we able to do a reaction? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can do reactions. Okay. Oh, she's back. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, you got 13 damage. You can do a reaction if you want. Oh, okay. Uh, what's on my reactions? Did you already do the 13 damage? Yes, you yes, did. Yes, I did. Okay. My reactions is, uh, I guess, the opportunity attack. That's if he moves out of your space. Oh, okay. Uh, it doesn't say... All I have is feather fall. Oh, and cutting words, I guess. You can do cutting words as a reaction? Uh, that's what it says in my list of reactions. Yeah, okay. she can. All right, yeah. So, um, what do you want to say to him to insult him for lightning doing a lightning bolt on you? You are a big jerk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what? What's the? Um, all right. So her words cut to, deep. <laughs> what, does he have to save against that? How does that work? Uh, it says. Uh. Oh, shoot. It uses up my Bardic Inspiration. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's the end of my Bardic Inspiration, I guess. No, well, um, you have, you have, uh, you have, like, little, you have, like, spell slots for Bardic Inspiration. Yeah, that's my last spell slot for Bardic Inspiration. Oh, really? It's already used twice, and I'm pretty oh. sure I used it on Anastasia also, because I know for okay. sure, in fact, it was Chertivir. Okay. And I think it was also Anastasia because Anastasia was um, 
I think close to Chertovir. So do you just have three per day? I only have three per day, yeah. Mm. Okay. So she rolls a dice and subtracts that from his his attack roll. Oh, for the next time? No, for the attack he did on her. Well, it was a lightning bolt, though. It wasn't an. It wasn't like an. Yeah, attack. he doesn't do a roll for that. There's no attack roll, so that wouldn't. There. I guess that. Yeah, you can take that back then. Oh, you so can subtract it from it the all. damage roll too. Oh, okay. So you roll a one d six and subtract that from how much damage you took. Oh, okay. Six, and then I'll uh, click it. Okay. Oh, wow, one. Okay, take. You get one hit point back. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. One. And it is Johnny's turn. What's Johnny going to do? He's going to cast Fireball. Whoa. Where is he going to put it? Up here. Oh, so it hits Richard and Chertovir? Yeah. Dexterity 17 saving throw. Okay. And it, they're still poison condition, right? Until their turn starts? Yes. So they make that with disadvantage. Well, Richard's out of the cloud. Yeah, he ended his turn outside the cloud. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you just make it at norm- as normal then. And Shurtovir's at disadvantage. Two hit points. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dexterity. well, it, it doesn't even matter because you're going to take half damage from... Yeah, so Shurtovir's going to be unconscious. Yeah. Okay, what's the damage? Dang, I was ahead of the race. The dexterity saving throw, is that what I gotta do? 30. Uh, yeah, dexterity saving throw. 12 probably doesn't make it, right? No, it's 17. Okay, so you both take 30 damage. 30 fire damage. Who's who shot two? that? Uh, Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. The one who did the stinking cloud. So he who dealt it uh, fired it. I get it. Um, so did I get thirty damage? Yeah. Yikes. Okay, I'm down. I'm hit. Yeah, I'm you're down. Unconscious. I'm I'm hit. I'm down. Jodavir, no. I was ahead of I was ahead of the race, man, and they took me out. Holy crap. His his last words before dying are it's pronounced Chertovir. <laughs> <laughs> The sea is silent. Wow. Right now I'm just drooling in the dirt. People. Okay, this one's going to try to get ahead of... of uh... Oh, natural 20. He gets ahead. Well, I guess you can roll still. <laughs> Anastasia can roll. You got to beat a, a natural... You got to beat a 20. Okay. He gets ahead of you by two spaces. And this one uh, in front of Willem is going to attack Willem at advantage because Willem's stuck in his own spider web. Fight. Whoa. Six to hit. That's really bad. And. What is that? 17. Plus five, that's a hit. For the claw, it's 1d8 plus three. Six damage to Willem and last attack. Thirteen plus five is eighteen. I think that hits too. Sixteen damage to Willem. So he he uh, bashes him twice, and he's gonna. He doesn't need to make an athletics check to pull away from Willem because Willem is in the is stuck in his web. He's just gonna run his movement which is 30. He is going to make an athletics check to kind of smash through the wall of his house to try to get around the stinking cloud because he's not immune to poison. Six. So he bashes into the wall and falls down on the ground. He doesn't doesn't crash through it like the Kool-Aid man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they're starting, the people are starting to see this carnage and they're freaking out. Because they're catching up to you guys uh, in the fighting. Three, none of those two don't move. And it's Willem's turn. He's out of his web. He's going to go attack the guy 
the, the, who couldn't smash through the wall. Oh, they have a 17. Yeah. yeah. Plus five is a hit with his bite, which is, and we'll see if he gets poisoned. 10. So he failed. So he takes 3d6. 14, 17. He's hurt pretty bad. He makes two attacks. So he's doing one more bite. Plus four. 11, he makes it. He doesn't get poisoned the second time. Or eight. Okay, he's not dead. But he's in really bad shape. And then Willem is going to try to get around him. Is Willem immune to poison? Yes, he's going to run straight through. Well, the other guy can't do anything because he's not going to run into the poison. So Willem's going. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, right into the middle. That's his turn. And now it is Ralph's turn. Hey, it's Ralph's turn. Yeah. Dead last. Make an athletics check. Seven. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you don't you don't get to move. I'm sorry. Okay. But Riley is also rolling like that too. She hasn't really gotten anywhere either. Hell yeah. Yeah. She only has plus two on her athletics. Loser. Yeah. He's gonna move up one right there. And now it is Anastasia's turn. Okay, I am gonna try my darndest to get up there and, and heal some folks because I know everybody's taking a beating right now. And you don't have um, any enemies around you. It's all just uh, regular racers that okay. are getting a little freaked out. Okay. Um, so, so should I roll an athletics check? What's that? Huh? Yeah, make an athletics check and, they're, and the guy you're rolling against is doing disadvantage because he's hesitant. 18. Okay. The... Um, they got a 12. So, yeah, you Yay. pull ahead. Woohoo! One space on the racing map. And you can do your full movement up on the battle map there. Because I can do mass healing word to anybody within range that I can see. Yeah. Uh, let me look at my spell. And uh, you can see quick. into the stinking cloud. Yeah. Uh, it's 60 feet, so I've got to go at least up two spots because Chernivir is the furthest away yeah. and he's like right at 120. So let me get back on that screen. Could I move myself like here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Because I've got 30. Okay. Yeah. So that should be. Okay. So actually. Musette and Chertivir and Willem can all get some healing from me on Mass Healing Word. 15 points. Oh, wow. 15 Thank points you. to Willem and uh, Chertivir and Musette? Yep. Okay. 13? 15. 15. 15. Nice. Thank you. So I don't You're have welcome. to do a, a death save. Nope. All right. I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> now get out of that fart cloud. Yeah. Your um, spiritual weapon. It can do its movement. I don't know if there's anybody that it, in range for it to attack. There's no it. There's no enemies. Okay. Around it right now. Yeah, you can just weave around them. So, um, how far can it go? I think is it twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Okay. So maybe right there. That's the end of that round. And Bentley is up next. He's working his way around the stinking cloud. He's going to attack Johnny first with his short sword of life, life stealing in one hand. Okay, ten plus nine is nineteen to hit. Okay, uh, does it does it does a nineteen hit him? Yeah. Okay. 
So he takes uh, 12 damage. And he's going to attack him again. Five plus nine is 14 to hit. Does that hit? No. Okay. And then he's got one more attack with his uh, longsword plus one. 21 to hit. It's. And that's 1d8 plus eight. So 10 more damage. And uh, as Bentley is slashing into this uh, Johnny that's on the on the racing field, there is. Does he may need to make a constitution or con yeah, constitution saving throw to drop the stinking cloud? Yes. Or to hold on to it? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. You you've taken what? Twenty damage, right? That's uh, half the damage. So he 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 passed his con save. He passed? Yeah, he got an 11. Or wait. 54. Oh, he hit it. Yeah, he hit it exactly. Yeah, so I think he failed. Well, because he took... Didn't he take like 20 damage? He, he took 22 damage, and he has to hit half the damage. Oh, okay. Or, or which would be 11, and he rolled an 11. Oh, so he, he passed then, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, because meets it is beats. All right, so con the okay, stinking cloud's still up. Uh, but his disguise drops, and so you don't see a human anymore. Uh, now you see Jonathan Livingston Seagull. <coughs> oh, for no! Really? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we saw the seagull come back. Yep. Hey. Where'd he come from? Why are you farting on your friends? This was wow. the Dominion you guys were in when uh, when he ran off. That's right. Oh, he came back. Mm -hmm. All right. He came so back in Fireball yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the end of Bentley's turn. He's kind of wiped out. Chernovir is next. Uh, right. You're lying on the ground in the middle of a stinking cloud. I get up and I keep moving. Okay, you, you, you can go half your move. movement because it takes half your movement to stand up. Okay. And he started in the cloud, so he has to make his constitution saving throw again. Gotcha. Oh, okay. so let's, let's I thought the cloud screw. went away. It didn't. He, he he was able to hold on to concentration. So I got uh, 20 plus 222 for my constitution save. Yeah, so yeah, you're so not fast. Yeah, you're and, not poisoned. Uh, Yep. So I just kind of like and, jumped down to, uh, onto my, uh, you know, legs and uh, let me move around half of my sp half of my uh, movement. Yeah. That's five. So I could do thirty. I could. I'll do fifteen. One, two, three. There. Okay. You so you're yeah, you're still in the cloud. Yeah, barely. Okay. All right. Um, and. Does he have actions now, Rob? I'm trying to think. He started his turn in the cloud, but he passed. I think he has actions. And then I got healed 15 points, and I was inside the cloud, and I passed my constitution saving throw. So, so Rob, what were you saying? He has an action. Yeah, So yeah, because okay. I think you lost your action last time. That's well, and right. you were unconscious anyway. Does that act can that action translate in moving another five feet? <laughs> it uh yeah, you, you can do an action to dash. Okay. Do you have thirty? Yeah, you can go thirty. I can go thirty now? Yeah. I'm getting out of the cloud, man. Okay. Let me just get it out of the cloud. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I can I can move ahead of everybody else, I guess. Well, you have to make an athletics check if you want to pass that Brock against ah. him. Okay. Okay. Let me see. So sh should I go back then? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'd go behind him. Okay. Let me see if I can uh, pass a athletics check. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. Come on. You got to beat a twenty-one. No, I got a seven. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you can't get you can't get past the Brock. 
So I uh, can only move... Your move. All your movement, you've used your action. If you have any bonus action things you want to do, you can do that. Otherwise, that's the end of your turn. Okay, gotcha. And now it's the Vrox's turn. It is going to turn around. It sees Chertovir running up to him, and he's going to turn around and start attacking him. That's the Vrox, right? Yeah. Right there, yeah. Uh, 16 plus 8, that's a hit. Oh, he is a, he's rolling it disadvantage yeah because you're um right so 11 plus 8 is 19 to hit uh because of your protection from evil and good does that wait does that stay on there when he's unconscious and so it's concentration up to, up to 10, 10 minutes. minutes yeah so if she loses concentration it, it then he loses it okay so it stayed on because i don't think anybody's even attacked um no i'm at i'm at full hit points yeah okay all right so it's just the advantage of being dead last (laughs) yeah so it uh, anyway it got one attack in from his beak you take eight uh piercing damage from the beak and then he's gonna make two talon attacks whoa natural one so he claws the ground and hurts himself for three damage because he got a critical fail and one more okay 12 plus six is 18 that hits uh, for the talent is 2d10 plus three seven plus nine 16 17 18 19 damage against Chertovir. Well, I only had 15 points, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 unconscious right now. Yeah, I hit the dirt again. I ran okay. out of the cloud and I hit the dirt. Yeah. Okay. Now the peas won't even mm-hmm. taste the same. It like, tastes like failure. Yeah. He started here. His movement is 40. So he's gonna run out of the cloud, up here, and start bashing on the rock. And, uh, well, Chertovir is unconscious, so he doesn't know what's going on. But, uh, if he was conscious, he would recognize this as Gaustus. After his pacted warlock got, uh, knocked out twice, he's, he's here to help. Okay. Homie. <laughs> yeah. My homie from hell. So first he's going to bite the rock. 18 plus 10 is 28 to hit. See, it does pay off to do a pact with the gulfs. 5, 10. Uh, 10 damage. Claws plus 10 is 18. That hits. 7 plus 5. That guy is dead. So the Vrock is dead. He's going to run over to Jonathan and start attacking him. He's got one more attack. With his tail, he's going to whip him. 16 plus 10 is 26 to hit. Jonathan takes... Uh, 15 bludgeoning damage from the tail. Fifteen uh, cold damage. So we've got a whole mess of people over here that are just kind of like not knowing what to do and they're hesitant. So they're all making their athletics checks against each other with disadvantage because they're afraid to move. So yeah, none of them are gonna. They're not really going forward. Uh, and then it's Riley's turn. Maybe this will give her a chance to finally catch up. Seven, eight, nine. Nope, she didn't move. Okay, and now it's Musette's turn. You have Butterfield behind you, and he shot you with a lightning bolt. And you have the gorilla just a few space, a, a little bit away, like 10 feet away from you. I would like to do Acid Splash on both Butterfield and the gorilla. Okay. It says uh, that, uh, yeah, they must be within five feet of each other which it looks like they're next to each other. Almost. Okay. 
And and what's the what do they have? Is there a saving throw for that or uh, dexterity fifteen? Okay. Eight plus eight plus six plus eight plus six. Fourteen. So he fails. Butterfield failed, and uh, the Varlgura dexterity is plus two. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So he passed. So do they take half damage if you if they pass? Okay, so the Barlgura doesn't take any. Roll your damage then, uh, Butterfield. Okay, so my damage is two d six for Butterfield. Yeah. One. Oh, and one d six for the other guy. Yeah. Okay. okay so it's okay. seven total for Butterfield. Okay. And then the other guy still takes one d six. Okay, and roll that one. 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 Okay. Got it. All right. Yeah, Butterfield. Uh, it looks like it um, singes his suit and uh, does some some bur- makes some burns on his arm. I stick my tongue out at him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that was just a cantrip. So yeah. I can uh, go ahead and roll to move away from them. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you, yeah, if you want to do that. Um, okay, and it's athletics. Okay. Uh, Fifteen. Okay, and he got nineteen plus nine is twenty-seven. Oh, okay. So you aren't able to pull away from him. Um, you're still kind of tangled up with him. Pageant storm. Where is she at? She should be in this group, right? Rob, do you know where she's at on the battle map? Oh, there, I see her. Okay. I right, yep, yep. Got it. She went into the house to try to get around the stinking cloud. Okay, so she's going to try to get over the fence. Uh she yeah, she got a 16 plus 9, so she totally makes it over the fence. And she's going to start chopping at Jonathan. She doesn't really have any allegiance or memories of him. He's just an enemy. It's, that looks like a seabird for some reason. Everybody okay. wants to attack the seagull. Yeah. Okay, so six plus nine is fifteen. Does that hit? No. Okay. Thought it did. He's got mage armor. Oh, okay. And 18 plus and it's 10 is uh, 10 slashing damage plus 2d6 fire damage uh, plus another 3. So 8 damage from the sword, which is going to swing it again. And 11, uh, 11 more slashing damage. How is Jonathan doing? 3 hit points left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's in bad shape. All right, and uh, that's her turn. The uh, human racers are still a little freaked out. They don't know what's going on. And it's Richard's turn. All righty. Well, the I'm kind of far is gone. Kind of far from the action at this point. I'm just going to run forward. Okay, are you going to go uh, past Chirdovir? Yeah, I'm just going to use my full mm-hmm. movement speed. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, you still have an action left. That was just your movement. <laughs> um. Well, I'm going to consume. Go to my inventory. I want to consume a potion of healer grading. Okay. Or great healing. It's a greater potion of healing, sorry. Yeah. And I regain 4d4 plus 4 hit points. Okay, yep, go ahead and roll that. 9 plus 4, 13 points of healing. Okay, Okay. yep, you can add that on there. And then I want to use my second wind. Okay. 
to heal and yourself some second more. second wind I can use once per short rest to regain 1d10 plus 10. Okay. So let me 1d10 to 14. All right, not too bad. And then on the racing track, does he move up at all, or do I have to athletics check? Ain't nobody um, run against. I, I, yeah, I make an athletics check, but not you're not rolling against anybody because you kind of went or skirted around them all. Hell yeah. All right, then athletics. Twenty-five. Oh yeah, you get to move two spaces. There now, Richard's in the lead. And then it's Barl Gura's turn, the gorilla one. I think that's right below Musette, right? So he's going to go... Well, he'll make an athletics check against Musette to get around her first. Natural one. He did not get it. Okay, so he's just right. He's just going to stay where he's at and just start pounding on Musette. So first is the bite. Wow. Wow. Uh, eight to hit. And then he's going to do two pu two punches. That's a hit. 17 plus 7 and 16 plus 7. So 14 uh, bludgeoning damage to Musette. Uh, 34 out of 68. Exactly half. Oh, okay. Not too bad. And he didn't pass his athletics check because he got a natural one, so he's not moving. He's staying right where he's at. Okay, now it is Butterfield's turn. He's going to make an athletics check to go around you also. So, uh, Musette, make another athletics check. Whoa, he got a natural one. Another too. athletics Jeez. check. Uh, nine. Okay, well, you still did better than him. So there was some ice that formed on the bottom of his shoes, and he slipped and fell down. And that wastes his turn. He's not going to get to make any attacks or anything. And now it's Jonathan's turn. What is Jonathan going to do? He's Jonathan's surrounded by enemies. Yeah, he's going to use <clears throat> all his sorcery points on this turn. Okay. Actually, first he's going to cast... What's it called? Uh, Tasha's Hideous Laughter. On Bentley? On, he's casting it at 5th, or what is that, 3rd level, so he's going to hit Bentley, um, the Ice Devil, and Paget Storm. Oh, man. Okay, what's the save for that? It's wisdom 17. And uh, Bentley has disadvantage. Why or not, the Ice disadvantage? Devil has disadvantage. Why, why disadvantage? He's using 3 sorcery points for that. Oh, okay. So, wisdom saving throw 17 with disadvantage. Yeah, just on one target. So, just on the Ice Devil. Oh, oh, it's not on Bentley? The disadvantage is just on the Ice Devil. Uh, 14. Okay, so That's... he's prone. Yeah, Bentley fell over laughing. Okay, and the Ice Devil is the other one? Dice Devil's next, and he's disadvantaged. Okay. Wow, he got a natural one. So he fell over laughing, too. And then Paget Storm. Okay. Uh, wisdom is plus zero. So she got a ten. So she also fell over laughing. Okay. Then I'm okay. gonna summon a Hound of Ill Omen. Okay. Isn't that also an action? It's a bonus action. Okay. He is going to run. Okay. Uh, Churduviri is up, right? No, he's unconscious. Mm -hmm. I, I am I am eating the dirt right now. Yeah, so nobody gets an attack of opportunity, right? Because you made them all fall over laughing. All right, where is Jonathan going? There. All right, that's his turn. It just says you can summon it to, to target one creature you can see within 120 feet of you. It doesn't say anything about when it attacks. Does it normally get, like, its own initiative? I think it does. But I always just put it on the same initiative because it makes it easier. I say yes, it gets to attack. 
Okay. He's gonna bite. Uh, Badget Storm. Okay, and I think he gets advantage because she's lying on the ground laughing. Yeah, and I think she also gets to make an extra save or something for taking the, if she takes damage. Yeah. I remember it having a really bad attack roll. Plus five to hit. Yeah. Got an 11. Okay, yeah, that misses. Okay, that's it, huh? Yeah. Okay. Willem is going to attack this uh, Noel Fang of the Nogu. Oh, I didn't know. Natural 20. I think that will just automatically kill it because there's poison. It's only got three hit points. So, yeah, Willem bites that guy and he dies. And then he's going to run up 5, 10, 15. Well, they're all falling over laughing. 20, and Chertovir's unconscious. So he can just, he doesn't have to roll athletics checks against him. Yeah. He's right there. And that guy is dead. I'll move him down there. I think, and Pageant Storm is in the wrong place. She's right over here. Now it's Ralph's turn again. Three. Oh, Ralph. Okay. That's, uh, <laughs> sorry. The disappointment. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I have oh, a row of inspiration, though. Does that help? Uh, yeah, three. you can you can add a you can add a D eight to that. A D eight. Yeah, I don't. Right. If you get more than ten, you can move up a square. Whoa! Which one's the eight? Is it this one? That's not the eight. It looks like Leviathan. It's this this one. Yeah, this one. Okay. One D eight. Yep. Six. Six. Okay, so six plus what did you roll before? Three. So that's <laughs> nine. Oh. Oh yeah, you didn't get to move. And you do I get to? Could, do you think I could use my? Uh, Hey, my, my, uh, what's this thing called? Oh, yeah, you don't, you have like a misty step? I have to get hit first. No. Someone's got to hit me, and no one hit no, me. I they all ran think, away. Yeah, no, misty step is just a bonus action. Yeah. Yeah, I also have misty step and misty escape, but I need to be hit. Someone yeah, physically well, needs mis- to hit you me. You don't need to be hit for misty step, just misty escape. You can do misty step anytime. Hold on. Well, then there you go. I mean, I guess I could. Hold on, where's yeah, my... Yeah, Misty Step would put you, like, you, it lets you go 30 feet, kind of teleporting. Uh, okay, yeah, sure, I'll go ahead and do Misty Step. So you could get... What do you say? 20, 20, They're showing 25. you a fight and get you. Yeah, you could get to here, right? You could get to right about That's here. There. Okay, cool. Around all it. the people, which okay. in the race would put you, I think, two spaces behind Musette. Right there. Uh, oh. And you're by. Is that right? I don't think that's right. Um, oh, kind of. Misty yeah, step. Yeah, Here we is. go. Yeah. Uh, Thirty feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, if you want to take a shot at Butterfield, you could. Because I think Misty Step was just a bonus action. Bonus action. Misty Step is a bonus action. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I use that. Elder's Blast. Okay, and it was Both a critical beans. hit. So it was a critical hit, so roll the damage. I'm going to put that five back. Can I get it? I'll, whatever your 1d10 10 plus three. Well, how many beams do you have, though? Uh, I have two beams. Okay. Are you sure it's two? Yeah. Okay. I and Jonathan I push him at, and I push him away three. every time okay. I hit him. Two beams at fifth level. Yeah. Okay. That's my Okay, so the first one's a critical hit, so just roll the damage and double it. And then you're gonna have to roll the hit for the second one. Okay. And then I roll the one D ten plus whatever. One plus okay. three, so four. Okay, four damage, and then roll to hit for the other beam. Roll to hit? Yeah. 17. 
And did you already add the sit plus seven in there? Yeah. Okay, that misses. Yeah, so you, you blasted a slash across his cheek instead of whipping it. Oh, well, now it's Zoe's turn. For real this time, I think. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead, since Butterfield is right there, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, Guiding Bolt, just first level, 15. Okay, uh, against who? Butterfield. Oh, he's at point blank range, so you have to roll with disadvantage if you're doing Guiding Bolt. Oh, okay. 12. Yeah, that misses. Uh. Okay, what about your uh, your um, spiritual weapon? Um, I guess we can go ahead and move that. I'm trying to get closer to those two so we can free up Musette. Um, so where is it going? I think you can move it too. Okay, so how it, it can just go 30 like normal? 20. 30 feet? 20, 20 feet. feet? Okay, let me get on here. One, two, three, four. Perfect spacing. All right, that's where I want it. Okay. Uh, roll to hit. Is it going to attack him? Yes. The one first one. fire is plus modern. four. Okay, okay, so that's so plus four. Roll 20, so to die and add four to it. 16 plus four is 20. Oh. Does that hit? Yes, it does. Okay, uh, roll your damage. Eight. Okay. Total. So that um, that the the onk is it shaped like a dagger? Yeah, I okay. I showed you that little dagger that yeah. had the onk handle. So yeah, it's, so yeah, it it, uh, it slashes him. And he takes a he he, he he takes another hit across his uh, hand because he puts it up to block it. That's the end of that round. So now we are back up to Bentley. Time for a break. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and advocate of his art. But Don's unique and inspiring paintings are for sale, and over 50% of the proceeds go to the Arts and Medicine program at the Texas Children's Cancer Center. There's even a paver in Washington, D.C. representing Celebrate Imagination. We're thrilled that this worthy cause is sponsoring our podcast again this year, and we hope that you'll consider looking over his Pinterest page and commissioning a painting of your own. For commissions, Don requires no money down, and there will be no obligation on your part. You can also head over to the Etsy shop to buy one of his books, like A Chimney Sweep's Tale, Celebrate Imagination, or The Imaginaries. Follow the link in the show notes, or click on the side banner, and let's see what's new with Don Bertram today. Dallas area friends, go and meet Don at the Dallas Country Reporter Festival in Waxahachie, Texas, on October 26th, 2024. Uh, Take a look at The Truth Behind It All, The Sun Watchers, and The Descendants. Also, go check out his videos uh, on the painting The Bug Brothers by Clive Barker and his introduction to the Hellraiser 35th Anniversary Charity Screening. Humanoid character artwork for Musette, Chertovir, Zoe, and Ralph by Asia Yordanova. She also created The Unbeheld in the opening title sequence. Jonathan Livingston Seagull artwork by Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. Map of the Reconciled Dominions and Isorderex by Marco Staines at Mark Stain Art. Jericho Squad intro composition Cradle of Jersemet provided by friend of the show Ben Warren. Additional in-game music by Tabletop Audio. A world of chaos. So death will now weigh. Humanity needs a hero. How do you know Rue isn't just f***ing with us again? Because he is attuned to it. But instead, we got this f- oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. We are absolutely <laughs> Do it. Do it. No! Ah, what 
is this thing? Well, he has your blade. But that's mine! These weapons are the only thing that can make them bleed. I want him dead. Cool. Then let's go kill this f You saved the world? Yeah. Whatever. Sure. Death World, where everyone can hear you scream. The Barker Cast Interviews, Occupy Midian. Previously, this book was only available on Kickstarter pre-order. But now you can get it on Amazon.com. Over 400 pages of interviews documenting our time at the start of the podcast and the Occupy Midian movement that successfully lobbied for an extended version of Clive Barker's Nightbreed when the movie studios and distributors were against it. Chock full of interviews with cast and crew, there are some great stories. Edited and assembled by Ryan Danhauser and Giselle Tung, the people behind the long-running Clive Barker podcast. Tell the world you're a Clive Barker fan and support this monumental effort from the fan community by buying this book on Amazon Hardcover, Kindle, or Apple Books. Thanks for listening. Reading. Thanks for reading. Another great way to support the Barker cast is go to our Tee Public store and get one of our t-shirts. We've got Jose's Baphomet design, Jericho Squad, uh, Cenobium designs by Nina and Ed Martinez, Marcus's Pinhead design, and our old legacy shirts. Just go to www.tpublic.com slash stores slash BarkerCast. Eureka! Eureka! Have you ever wanted to visit Fairbanks, Alaska? Catch the Northern Lights visit Denali National Park, China Hot Springs, or any of Alaska's other scenic destinations, come stay in our Eureka Airbnb. Use the code BarkerCast and we'll take 10% off your stay. Make sure there are cool Clive Barker decorations, books, and movies. Maybe you can even join us as we record an episode. Of course, the best way to support this podcast is through our Patreon at patreon.com slash BarkerCast589. Our subscribers will get exclusive access to content not available anywhere else, like our Collector's Corner video series, rare Barker videos, and early behind-the-scenes stuff. Plus, backers in the $10 tier will also be able to choose an episode topic, and we might mail you something once in a while, depending on your location. Our supporters also get access to the exclusive channel in our Discord server. We'll be forever grateful if you consider helping us out and subscribing to our Patreon. So what's new on Patreon? Thanks to our backers, David Anderson, Eric Van de Holt, Amanda Stewart, and Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. On Patreon now, we've got Jose's Story with No Title, a deep dive into Kaleidoscope, Don Bertram's Memory of Clive Barker's A to Z of Horror, BarkerCast Recap, conversation with editor and author Stephen Jones, and coming soon, we're going to have more Collector's Corner, and our backers can join us for the Book Club of Blood. And we're back. So Rob, if Bentley has fallen over laughing, does he need to make another save to get out of that? Is it a concentration thing? At the end of each of its turns, and and each time it takes damage, they get another wisdom saving throw. Oh, it's wisdom? 17? And if they take damage, they get advantage on that saving throw. Oh, okay. I don't think he's taking any damage. No. Okay, so yeah, so 17 he get, wisdom. He got a 14. He's stuck there laughing. I don't think he can do anything else, right? Except for lie there and laugh. Yeah, it's prone and incapacitated. Okay. All right, then. Uh, that's his turn. And now it's Chertovir's turn. Uh, make a death saving throw. All right, that's just saving throw for me. Yep, just roll a 20-sided die. And my first saving throw is 18. That's a success. Yes. Thank you. Nothing else for me to do? Uh, that's it. All right. Okay, so this time he's doing a wisdom saving throw, probably with advantage. Yeah, because it was just and, the one roll. Yeah. Uh, 11. I failed. Okay, he's still stuck there lying on the ground laughing. 
And then it's Riley's turn. She's not in the combat. I think she's still like down here. Wow, she's so far behind. She's the worst racer. Okay. She's got a plus two. 18. Or no, 18 plus two is 20. She gets to move two spaces. Woohoo! He just needed a little discouraging words from me. And that got her motivated. Because I said she was terrible. Uh, I would say she's probably not close enough to get into the action yet. Uh, and now it's Musette's turn. And Musette is kind of stuck with Butterfield uh, on and a gorilla. Yep, Butterfield and a gorilla next to her. What, what do you want to do, Musette? Uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and put a cloud of daggers right in between them. Oh, okay. To hit both of them. Okay. And the, yeah, yeah, to hit both of them. So, um, yeah. how what at what level are you casting it? How much damage does it do? You know what? Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, cast it at fifth because that's what it's showing me. It is 10d4 damage. Oh wow! Well, yeah. Okay. So roll that. Four. Okay. So 10d4. So Joe, can you keep in a, a hold of 10 times? I'm seeing two Jazays on my screen. Huh. Oh, yeah. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that is the happening. substance. Yeah, and it, one it, of them has more blue on it than the other. Coming out of my back, see? Oh. Exactly, yeah. yeah. The substance. Weird. <laughs> Which we okay, highly sorry. recommend if anyone's seen it. 21. 21? 21 damage. Okay. And there's no save for that. They just take it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. My screen is And uh, the Baldura is 21 damage. Okay. So what you see uh, on um, what you see on Butterfield is his uh, human form kind of drops on the ground and dies, and uh, and then it starts changing and it turns into this uh, nine foot tall werewolf looking guy he's got a big wolf head and it's got a um a long snake coming out of the middle of its shoulder blades and he's holding a big uh uh, he's holding a huge like uh double-handed axe so musette killed his human form he didn't have a he didn't have a a disguise that was a um, an illusion he was he was shape changed that thing looks pretty brutal. Yeah. And it's scaring the crap out of all the racers. I know I stepped away, but who is that? Is that Butterfield? Yeah. Make an athletics check if you're going to try to run away from them. And I'm going to try to run away. Ugh, 11. You're, you, didn't, you weren't able to get away from them. You're kind of still tangled up with them. And now it's Pageant Storm's turn. Where is she? She's up near the front, isn't she? And she's like lying on the ground laughing. Rob, she just makes a wisdom saving throw, right? Yeah. I see 19 plus zero. So 19. Passes. So she stands up and she is really mad. She's going to rage. That used half her movement so she can go 20. She doesn't care about the hound. She's going to go past it and take an attack of opportunity. 5, 10, 15, 20. So, uh, Rob, you can do the, have the Hound do an attack of opportunity. I assume he misses at 9. Yeah. 40, well like gonna attack 40 feet away? His movement was 50. Jonathan's? Yeah, but I'm looking at the battle map here. I think she, he's 40 feet away. Oh, so yeah, really? Wait. 35. Okay, 35 40. feet. Okay, I don't think she has any kind of ranged attack unless she throws one of her weapons at him. Yeah, she's going to uh, throw her revenant double-bladed scimitar at him. So I'll say because he's 35 feet away, she's doing it, throwing it with disadvantage. So, but it's uh, 19 to hit. That hits. Okay. Four plus five is nine damage. Yeah, he's dead. Okay, so she goes, and she she uh, leans her, um, she she leans back really, and and uh, and throws this scimitar really hard. It goes, 
and uh and uh and cuts into Jonathan and knocks him out of the air. Um, it will treat him like a player though. He still help, will have death saving throws and stuff. And that is her turn. She does not like being uh, forced to lie down on the ground and laugh in the middle of her race. Uh, Richard's turn. Alrighty then. So Richard is just going to keep running. He's going to try to make catch up with uh, JL Seagull. Okay. And JL Seagull is, is unconscious. I'm going to run over to him. Okay. Uh, yeah. Make an athletics check to see how far you go on the map. And then, and, you know, and then you can just do your movement on, on, uh, up there. You got nobody that you're running against. Really. Well, I got a 10. Okay. 10 for athletics. Yeah. Okay, um, and yeah, what's your movement? It's 30? 30. Okay, and if you want to do double move, you know, do you use your action to do another move, you can go 60. All right, yeah, on let's the, do On that. the battle map. Okay. So there's 30. Yeah. You just need to... So you need another 30. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Richard's really far. Someone's got to win this thing. I Just got to keep on running. I know. Even though you didn't do well on your athletics check. But you used your action to keep moving. And you're not really racing against anybody. Okay. Uh, Richard's way off in the lead. The, oh, this Noel is right ra is uh, rolling against Ralph. So make an athletics check. Ralph needs to make an athletics check. Yep. And you got ten. Oh, he got an eight. So he got stuck by you. He um, and he's gonna attack you. Oh, he is, is he? Yeah. Let him attack me. How does he attack me? He is going to burst his. Well, he's gonna stab you with a spear. Fucking asshole. Okay. Eighteen plus. Four is twenty-two to hit. And yeah. So nine, you take nine piercing damage. Ugh. Nine piercing damage. Yeah. That's fine. I can, I can, I can afford it. But I guess, I mean, since he hit me, I'm gonna have to just use a reaction to turn visible and teleport up to sixty feet to an occupied space that I can see, and then okay. I'm gonna remain invisible. Until the start of my next turn, okay, or until let's I do that on the on the battle map first. Then. What'd you say? We'll do that on the battle map first up up top here. So cool. Sixty feet away. Where is that going to be? Okay. All right. Yep. We'll move you right there. All right. There goes my misty escape. Okay. Bye, misty escape. <laughs> that was the Knoll's turn, so you can't do actions or anything yet until your turn. And you're invisible. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm invisible until uh, you remain invisible until the start of your next turn, or until you attack or cast a spell. Okay, Musette, the Barlgura's turn. He's going to try to make a um, make an athletics check to get away from you and out of the cloud of daggers. So he got uh, 22. Musette, what is your athletics check roll? 13. Yeah, so I didn't... Okay, yeah, so he, he gets out of that. And he's going to run his full movement, which is 40 feet, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. What does he do if he runs into Ralph and he can't see him? If he runs into Ralph and can't see him, interesting question. Yeah. Once for short rest, and you take damage, blah blah blah. blah. Well, yeah. Let's see. You, yeah, it's not going to say on there. Um, that is. I guess Mel, uh, Ralph, make a dexterity saving throw because he's running right through you. So you're going to see if you if he if you can dodge him. A dexterity saving throw. Yeah. Okay, that's going to be okay. Twenty. Oh wow! Yeah, you dodged him, and he keeps going. 
Cool. Forty. He's a, he's right ahead of you. And um, Musette, you got an attack of opportunity if you want to hit him on his way out. Okay. Then I would like to hit him with the warp ball long sword. Okay, roll to hit. Uh, fifteen. Okay, uh, that hits. What's oh. your damage? Um, one d eight plus three. Eight. Oh, uh, eleven total. Okay. Warpful. Oh, the sword. Yeah, you slashed him. Okay, and now it is Butterfield's turn. He's going to use half his movement to get up. Looking around, he sees Musette, who did all that damage to him. Hmm. I guess he's just going to try to go around you. Uh, make an athletics check. Okay. You got a 24. Yeah. Uh, I got a 21. Okay. So he can go 40 feet. Forty. Yeah. And let's see, what else is he going to do? He looks right at Ralph. And he says, I see you. And he is going to swing his uh, axe at Ralph. Damn it. Yeah. And that is a 26 to hit. Oh, uh, yeah, he hits me there. That's, uh... Sorry, it's 30-something. I, But, yeah, anyway. And 2d10 plus 9 slashing damage. 16 slashing damage with 16 his axe. 16 damage? Yeah. Okay, so he saw me, even though I'm invisible. Yeah, he did. <clears throat> okay. And he's gonna, uh, and he's gonna bite you with the uh, wolf fangs. And that is plus sixteen to hit. hit another sixteen. Yeah, natural twenty plus sixteen is thirty-six to hit. Oh my god. Yeah, so that's 2d6 plus 9 piercing damage. So 36 and so 36 on top of the 16 I just took off? No, no, that was just a hit. Yeah. That was just so a hit. He's only damage. It's a, oh. It is the natural 20, so it's a critical hit. So he yeah. does 9 plus 9, 18 times 2. Yeah, now it's 36 damage. 36 damage now. Oh. So 36... Because I already took off 16 damage. Yeah, now a plus 36. Oh my god. I'm going to hellish rebuke this guy. Okay. Attack saving throw is dexterity 15. Pointing the finger at the creature that damaged me. He's momentarily surrounded by hellish flames. The creature must make a dexterity saving throw. It takes 2d10 fire damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. I see a six plus, you said uh, dexterity saving throw? Plus six yes, is 12, so he, he failed. So what's it, the damage? It takes 2d fire damage on a failed save. Okay, yeah, so go ahead and roll it. 2d 10. Five and 10, 15. 15, okay. Yeah, he takes 15 fire damage. He still has one more attack. So the snake that comes out from the between his shoulder blades reaches over his shoulder and bites at you. Even though that was a reaction that I did, do I hit the packs? Do I hit cast the slot? Yeah. I mean, okay. unless it and it depends on what it says. It says it use a. Does it say use a pack slot on it? Plus sixteen to hit. He. Yeah. So eight it. plus sixteen is. What is that, 24? Yeah. To hit? Yeah. Take 1d6 plus 9 piercing damage. Uh, so 9, 12 piercing damage. 
and make a constitution saving throw. Okay, so 12 damage, you said? Yeah. Okay, and then a constitution saving throw. Yeah. That's a six. So this guy's getting me. Yeah, and also you need to reduce your maximum hit points by 12. So I just put 73? Yeah, yes, right. Does it come back to me later? <laughs> uh, you don't know right now. Damn it. All right, Rob, it's Jonathan's turn, so just roll the um, roll the death saving throw and just put in the in the text message what you get. He he thinks that uh, Butterfield's got it this in hand, so he's going to try to run forward, and he's going to attack Gaustus. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, he's hurt really bad too. Actually, Gaustus is lying on the ground laughing still. So he gets to attack with advantage. This is a very strange race. Yeah. That's a concentration spell, so he's not. Oh, it's up. Right. Yeah, he's just lying on the ground. So that's a hit. Five damage to Gaustus. And two attacks with his claws. Yeah. Fifteen. Nope. 12 plus 5 is 17. No. So he misses the other two attacks. Okay, Willem's turn. He's right next to Chertavir. Where the red and green oh, dots yeah. are. Okay. He is going to go back to protect Gaustus and attack this guy. So first he's going to bite him. 13 plus 8, that's a hit. So 7. And that guy, that knoll is dead. And he's going to just kind of stand over his body. Okay. That's Willem's turn. Now it's Ralph's turn. So I'm sandwiched between Gaustus and a gorilla? Yeah. That's exactly where I always dreamed I'd be. <laughs> okay. Well. Hot. <laughs> I'm running. <laughs> Ugh. Well, I don't have much life left. I'm about to die. And I got some spell slots. So what do I want to do? How many people are around me? Musette's right in front of me? Uh, no, Musette's way back. Like, okay, so... 25, 30 feet back. I don't have any friendlies around me, right? Just buttheads? Well, um... Willem is like... 15 feet away? I don't care yeah. about Willem. Willem's a butthead. <laughs> I don't care about Willem. Yeah, Will Willem's protecting your corpse, but he's a butthead. Yeah. Spider right. head. He's a web head. I think what I will do... Who's closer to me? The, they're both the same. They're both right on you. The okay. Barlgura and Butterfield. I guess like I'll. I guess I'm gonna grab Butterfield by the arm. Okay. okay. Uh, the touch of your shadow wreath hand can siphon life force from others to heal your wounds. So vampiric touch okay. makes you make a melee spell attack against a creature within your reach. On a hit, the target takes 3d6 necrotic damage, and you regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage dealt. Until okay. the spell ends, you can make the attack again on each of your turns as an action. Okay, so fifth level. Uh, so you have to make a spell attack roll to grab his arm. Spell attack roll. Yeah. Uh, 20. So it's a natural 20. Yeah. The critical hit. So that automatically hits. Roll your damage and double it. And you okay, can double hold on. The, you can double the healing that you get from it. 10 total? Yeah, so double it to 20 because it's you a critical hit. Fifth level? Yeah. That's 5d6. Oh. So roll it two more times? Yeah. We were at 10. We were at 10, yeah. 14. 14. 19. 19. And then double it, he said, so 38. Yeah, so he takes 38 damage. And how much healing do you get out of that? Do you get half? 
Um, and you regain hit points equal to half the amount of the necrotic damage dealt until the spell. So blah, 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 38 blah. divided by two is what? 19. Uh, yeah, I go so up 19. You get 19 hit points back. <sighs> then I'll just bite him. Hungry Jaws. Bonus action. Okay. Yeah, once per short rest. Okay, yeah, uh, roll to hit with your bite. 11. 11? Yeah. yeah, that misses. Now it's Anastasia's turn. Okay, I'm trying still desperately to get up there so I can give uh, both Ralph and Chertevere some healing. So I guess I'm going to have to try to go around Musette. So yeah. I guess we have, the two of us need to do athletics checks. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but you can get up this side, Musette. Well, she could let you go by, I think. Musette just lets her go by. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> Let's do that then. Okay, yeah, so I'm the, gonna... the the the, con the contested checks is like you know people trying to race each other. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my thirty feet movement. So okay. one, two, three, four, five, six. Am I? Is Butterfield blocking my way to see Ralph? Uh, Would you consider that blocking? Oh, or can right I there. see Ralph? No, because... I, you can see you can see Ralph. It's not. I mean, it, he's not. You can't see all of him, but you can see him. Okay, en enough to hit him with a healing spell. Yeah. Okay, so, so we're gonna do fourth level mass healing word. Oh, is Chertovir in range of that also? Y uh, yeah, it's sixty feet. Oh wow. Okay. So how many Heck people yeah. are you hitting with that? I, I'm gonna get both Ralph and Chertovir. <laughs> Okay. Much appreciated. Okay, so 15. 15 points. Yep. Wow. Alrighty. I'm adding 15 points. Thank you. I feel stronger. Yeah. I feel like running. Cool. I feel like I don't want to hit my fist on the floor the third time. Rob says the Hound of Ill Omen isn't gone. I, we might have skipped that that turn. So yeah, Rob, why don't you just have him do some do whatever he's gonna do then? He missed. He rolled okay. a one. Was he? Who was he attacking? He can only attack Pageant Storm because that's the original target. Oh, I see. Okay. It can be used as either. Could I do it a second time? Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's allowed, but I would allow it. Because I'll let, yeah, I'll let you do action spells and bonus action spells. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I know Chertivir was basically dead before, so let's yeah. go ahead and hit him okay. up a second time. And it says I have to do it at third <clears> level, <throat> so let me get back up to you. My bonus action uh, mass healing is going to be another 13. So All that right, should get you boys going. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank did, you, Anastasia. Did you heal Bentley also? He's there. <laughs> He's right below right below Chertovir. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead and give him too. I, did, I can't see him on my screen. Uh, it was 28. 28. 28 points. Total. Okay. Between the two. Oh, there he is. Okay. I just barely see him on my screen. Okay. Got it. Much appreciated, says Bentley. And now it's his turn. He really wants to win the race, but he also wants to protect his friends. I think probably protecting his friends is more important than winning the race. So he's going to run backwards and he's going to attack this Barrel Gura. Bentley's going to attack it with his uh, first with his short sword of life stealing. 14 plus 9 is a hit. 1d6 plus 7. 12, 13 damage. Then he's going to attack him again with the same thing. That hits. And 9 more damage. And then his longsword plus 1. 13 to hit is a miss. And that's the end of Bentley's turn. Okay. Chertovir's turn. Chertivir, you're lying on the ground, so it'll take half your movement to get up again. You've got Gaustus so. next to you all of a sudden. Oh, cool. Um, Gaustus helped me last time I was doing death saves, and that's why I got these new uh, little antenna. 
Right. So I am in a new pact with him, and I guess I can see that he's here to protect me. So you know what? I think I'll, I'll um, since someone else is already way far ahead, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick around here with Gaustus uh, next to him. What okay. what are the enemies close to me? Uh, there's the Hound is the closest one. It's not much of a threat though. It was Jonathan's Hound of Ill Omen. Is it that one over there? Yeah, it's to the south. It, it's, it looks like yeah. a Wolverine, like okay. yeah. And then, and, and then, then I got Barl the werewolf. Gura is about fifteen twenty feet uh, behind you. Behind me? Yeah, the big gr orange gorilla. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm turning around looking at it right now. Yeah. I guess I'll send the uh, magic missiles against the uh, the orange gorilla. Okay. Yeah, roll that automatically hits, so just roll your damage. And right, with, depending see. on what spell slot you're using. I am using magic missiles at a fifth level. So okay. when you cast a spell using spell slot of second level or higher, the spell creates one more dart for each slot level above first. So I'm doing fifth level. Let's go ahead and roll. Uh, fifth level would be. Oh wait a minute. Let me let me see how many. The spell creates one more dart for each slot member uh, level. So. So it's three until second. Then on third level, I add one more. That's four, yeah. five, six. So uh, I'm going to have six um, okay. missiles. And, and I'm each missile launch... is 1d4 plus whatever you, the you know, damage okay. bonus is. 1d4. Two, three, four, five, six. So 6d4. Yeah. And then you add the damage yeah. bonus to each missile points to the 13 and make it 19 hit points i, think I don't know probably... what did you use the did you roll regular dice or did you use the thing to i rolled regular dice oh, okay yeah so you add one one for each missile so six more you said 13 plus six that's 19, 19. damage yep that's okay. right okay you killed him hey yeah Farl gura is dead uh do you want to run uh, ahead or what do you want to do yeah how many how much can i move now uh my the half uh, of oh, my you could, movement? well yeah you can only move half of your movement because you use the other half to get up one two three so i would i would go over here right yeah and i need to be facing the right direction because this is an important race there yeah i'm assuming you're not running backwards <laughs> be like okay. hey sure you're running the wrong way oh yeah yeah <laughs> No, man, I'm going back home. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a, That was a good turn. You killed the Barlgura. Yeah. Uh, and next is Gaustus' turn. And he sees his ancient enemy up there. Mm -hmm. He's going to go right at him. And help Ralph out. It's First, it's going to bite at him. 19 to hit. And then he's going to make two uh, two more attacks. One with his claw and one with his tail. So then he's going to claw him. 17 is a miss. And his tail, 19 plus 10 is 29. That hits. So nine damage. Normally there would be ice damage to this too, but that doesn't hurt him. And that's the end of his turn. <laughs> and now it's Riley's turn. Maybe she'll get to catch up with everybody. How far are we into the race? How, how much longer do we have to go? Uh, you guys are about three quarters of the way through it. Riley did not. She's not. She just can't get ahead of anybody. Uh, now it's Musette's turn. Hi, I'm Musette, and I'm standing right here. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Here we go. Okay. What's Massette doing? She's hanging out. Yeah. Good. She's, uh, she's behind. Um, she's kind of towards the back. 
uh, of the. She's behind Butterfield, like twenty-five feet away from him. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead and throw acid splash on him. Okay. Doesn't that hit everybody around him? But who's around him? Ralph. Ralph. Musette is going to just misty step ahead thirty feet okay. into the shit. Okay. Right there? Sure. Okay. Uh, so that was a bonus action. What does she want to do for her action? Okay. Um, I guess I'll just do healing word on uh, anyone who needs it, which is Ralph and does Bentley need it? Or Chodavir? Can Chodavir even Healing word is just heals one person. Oh, okay. Then Ralph. So Mustet is doing healing word on Ralph. I hit cast. 1d, uh, 3d, 4 plus 3. Okay, so uh, go ahead and roll that. Okay, 3d, 4 plus 3. 8. 8? So 8 healing to Ralph? Yeah. Okay, all right. So next is Pageant Storm. Where is she? Wait, 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 I thought I was next because Ralph just finished his turn. No, I'm playing for Mousset. I just finished Mousset's turn. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Catalina had to go to choir rehearsal. I think that uh, Pageant Storm is still not really concerned about the Hound of Ill Omen, and she's just going to use her turn to run 40 feet. So she's going to go 80. She's just a little bit ahead of Richard now. And you can go ahead and do Attack of Opportunity. 13 to hit. That's a miss. Okay, and that's her turn. And Richard is next. All right, so Pageant Storm is uh, running right, right up next to me. And uh, so I'm feeling pretty confident. You know, I got somebody up here. I was afraid that I was going to be a little bit singled out in case something happens towards the end of this this hall here. Um, so I just continue to do what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just running. Okay. So I'd like to double move Okay. for my actions. So that would take me 60. And I'd like yeah, to just go, go ahead and move line. 60 forward. Alrighty then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do you have um do you still have your action surge? I do have my action surge. You could do um you could do another thirty feet with the action surge if you wanted to. I, I just click that off, good call. Thank you. And um, I'll do another 30 feet. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, man. So close. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're making that. That's going to be the end at, once you get off the screen there. All righty. You're coming up on the finish line. We'll move you down on the race thing. You're pretty far ahead there. In the old Mario Karts, they used to do rubber banding, where where if the if the NPC characters got too far behind, as soon as you turned your back on them, they would just suddenly teleport up so they were closer to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, but we won't do that. There's a Noel still alive, and it's going to make an athletics check against Ralph. Damn it. Yeah, so tw- uh, 13. It uh, doesn't hit. Oh, wait, I'm doing an athletics check. <laughs> Sorry. 17. Oh. He oh, I didn't even in, add my other thing. He kind of gets in behind you, but he's not able to get around. He so tries. It'd be, it'd be 17. Okay. So you, oh. you blocked him. So he Did gets I? mad and he's going to attack. So, so it'd be 17, 18 because I got the thingy. The, I forgot to add the one. He attacks me. Yeah, he's going to attack you with his spear. What? Uh, 11. Uh, that doesn't... Misses. Yeah. Okay. Can I react? No, he didn't hit me. Okay. Yeah. Not every reaction is to getting hit, but some of them are. Okay, and now it's Butterfield's turn. 
Wow, he's got Musette next to him and Gaustus and Ralph. He's gonna swing his axe at Gaustus. Oh, that's a is that a two? Yeah. It's plus sixteen is eighteen. Oh, that does hit, even though he rolled a two. So he just has to he can only miss with a one. Twenty-one damage to Gaustus. And he's going to bite Ralph with his wolf fangs. Damn it, guys. I know. 21 to hit, plus 9 is 16 damage to Ralph from biting. And the snake, what is the range on the snake bite? 15 feet. Yeah, the snake is going to bite Musette. 12 plus 16 is a hit. 1d6 plus 9. So... 13 piercing damage and she needs to make a constitution saving throw seven okay yeah that's a fail so she reduces her uh, max hit points by 13 okay, hold on okay so she reduces her max hit points yeah like same, same thing as what happened to Ralph uh, yeah so it was 13 damage and her hit, max hit points are reduced by 13 Cutting words, you stupid butterball. I hope you slip on a banana peel and break your face. Okay. <laughs> All right. Didn't she say she was out of bardic inspiration? Ah, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh... Uh, Rob, can, yeah, um, can you have Jonathan make another death save and just text me the results? Oh, okay. Thank you. Willem's going to get in on the fight. And he's going to bite. Yeah, plus eight. Five damage. Constitution saving. Fourteen, he passed. He didn't get poisoned. That was Willem's turn. Now it's Ralph's turn. Ralph's turn. Where the... Elders blast these guys. (laughs) <laughs> you're at point. You're at point blank range, so it would be a oh dang it! I hate all of this. I'm gonna hit Butterfield with hideous laughter. Okay. Um, what's the what's the saving throw for that? Wisdom saving throw. Uh, fifteen. Okay, he got eighteen because he's got plus fourteen on wisdom. Okay, well then I've wasted that. So he passed. Well, it's Anastasia's turn. Okay. Guiding Bolt, fifth level. All right. Roll to hit. 28. That definitely hits. 26 damage. Wow. He's starting to look hurt. Okay. And... Now, one of the things that I have on my list here for actions uh, is something that I can do in combat. I, it's healing hands. It says once per long rest as an action, touch a creature and restore hit, 10 hit points. Is that... I, I can't do that because I cast a spell, correct? Right, yeah, because you did your action already. Okay. I do have first level healing word as a bonus action. And I'll go ahead and do that on Musette since she just took a beating there. Okay. How much does she get back? Uh, Working on it. Nine. Okay, nine points back to Musette. Nice. Thank you. And and since you guys are working on Butterfield, what what I'll do for my movement is one, two, three, four... I'm just going to move five spots. One, two, three, four, five. That way I'm in range of that little knoll guy down there, and that'll be my turn. I think that knoll is dead. Because if that one up there is dead, then... Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Is he? Can we check on that? Yeah, I'm looking. Because I don't want to (laughs) die. You guys need me right now. Yeah, he's totally dead. Okay, good. All right, so that'll be my turn. Okay. 
All right, and next up is Bentley. He's going to run over here um, between Ralph and Gaustus and start hacking at uh, Butterfield. Chertovir will be next. Probably a miss. 12, yeah. And, geez, three. That's also a miss. And one more with his offhand. 24, that's a hit. Uh, 10 damage to him. To Butterfield. That's the end of Bentley's turn. Oh. Now it's Chertovir. I am going to keep on running. Uh, can I move? I'm just going to yeah. go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I'm next to Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Uh, hey, buddy, what's what's new? Where'd you go? He's unconscious. Okay. Hey, did the dog move for a particular reason? Oh, yeah, he's... Well, because I keep skipping Jonathan's turn because he's unconscious. Oh, uh, okay. And then he's on Jonathan's turn. Okay. So Rob, Rob was just moving him, you know, because he missed his turn. And he's chasing after Pageant Storm because that's the only one he can attack. But he'll never catch her. Well, maybe after the race is over. Okay. So that's true. So did Chertovir did his movement, right? Has he done an action yet? Yes, I did my movement. And uh, I talked to the seagull that was unconscious, and uh, that's it. That's my turn. You're not going to do an action? You could double move with an action. Okay, let's double move again. So I will move another one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. I'm getting okay. close to pageant storm. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then... Gaustus is going to attack Butterfield some more. And those are both plus 10, so they both hit. And then the tail. 14, that's a miss. Okay. So one bite and one claw. 12. And that's it for his turn. He's going to try to catch up to everybody. She didn't go any further. Musette's turn. Musette's yeah just everything set can do hurts everybody i think Musette wants to run forward okay and try to get away from all this uh chaos and move make forward a, make an athletics check against butterfield be uh 22. 14. so yep she gets to go around him Nice. He'll make an attack of opportunity with his axe. So 7 plus 14 is a hit. Twelve. She takes 12 damage from the axe. Okay. Um, damage. Then... What else is she going to do? She, she can do Misty Step. So she's going to go 30 feet forward? Yeah. And she still has an action because that's a bonus action spell. So yeah. She could, she could use her action to run. And then let's have her just run like crazy forward more. Okay. So that's 30 feet, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't have to roll anything? No. There's nobody okay. to go around except for Anastasia, I guess. Okay. If Anastasia let her go by. <laughs> yeah, just this once, though. Okay. <laughs> Uh, now it's pageant storm. She's gonna. She can go 80 feet. There, and that's her turn. Now it's Richard's turn. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and run forward. Try to cross okay. that finish line. Okay, Richard wins the race. Yay! Jericho Squad 77 wins. Yeah. I'm just like, does that so, mean, uh, what does that mean? So, Somebody, yeah, as soon as, as, our, soon as our Richard, boss is in charge. 
as soon as Richard wins the race, the um, all the there are I think just two demons left, right? One is a gnoll oh. and one is a um, and one is a Butterfield. They all disappear, and um, and actually Willem and and Willem and Gustus. and Gaustus also disappear, and everybody else just kind of runs the race. Um, I would say that pageant storm is clearly getting second place because she's right there um Chertovir, make a couple of athletics checks and then we'll have musette make a couple of athletics checks and we'll see who who wins between the two of you for third place first athletic check there's seven points second athletic check i've got three points oh okay so 10 what about uh, musette 13, 18. Okay, yeah, Musette passed you. Cool. Um, so Musette got third. And uh, Chirovir is fourth place. Yeah. yeah. And and eventually the rest of them, um, the less, rest of them cross the finish line. And Rob, can you uh, give me the rest of the um, death saving throws for Jonathan and let me know what the result was? So, um, does anybody want to check up on Jonathan after the race? I guess I will. Okay. Well, Rob, and you when, should go eat him. When, when, when I tried. Will, he won't let me. Well, well, he will now because he's dead. Oh. The seagull's dead. Yeah. Oh, no. What a butt. Well, I'm not going to eat the seagull. I'm going to. I'll. I'll uh... Did we recognize that it was Jonathan. Livingston seagull though because he's just a seagull I mean yeah but he's a seagull, a seagull that's wearing like a little cape and a, and a, and oh okay and he's got like a wand strapped to his leg and he's got like a cigarette hanging out of his mouth yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll turn I'll, I'll taxidermy him well I'm very sad that he's okay. dead and we'll put him on top of Bentley's VCR we're not going to taxidermy <laughs> should, him. Should we find out why he turned into such a dick? Because, you know, we yeah. could question him as long as we make sure that we don't ask ourselves questions and use up our questions. <laughs> I think he just got tired of our did, shit. Did he um, Did he leave with, like, that circus guy or something way back when? He left chasing after somebody. He, he, uh, he took off. Right. It, in the middle of the, that circus fight where... Ralph had to fight him. He yeah. he flew out through a hole in the ceiling with a minotaur. Yeah, and Bentley caught heck over it because uh, he was a Jericho agent that went AWOL. Mm-hmm. And now we killed him. Yeah. Well, should we take him back to the base? To yeah, we should. Cover? We should recover his body and debrief at least. Uh, yeah. Higher ups. Okay. Right. And and we I'm, can. I'm we serious can stop about questioning and... the dead. Yeah. Do you we want to do that now, it. or do you want to save it for next time? Let's save it for next time. Okay. We can we can figure out what we want to ask so that we that's only we ask get. those questions. Yeah, right, and, that's and, and I'm sorry, everybody. This went this went kind of long. I, I had never done a you know a thing like this with the race and everything. Well, I thought it was uh, done very well. I appreciate being a part. Yeah. Say that because you won the race, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you that was awesome. Off. All right. Yeah, and so and we'll, Jericho we'll, won the race. So next time we'll uh, we'll pick it up right at the end of the race, so that you 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 all have time to talk to everybody and figure out what's going on. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our Discord server. The best way to support us is to buy our book, The Barker Cast Interviews, Occupy Midian, available in hardcover on Amazon and ebook on Amazon and Apple Books. Fundraiser 10 is all about Patreon this year. Become a patron to get access to exclusive stuff, 
pick an episode topic, and maybe even get cool stuff in the mail. You can also buy a t-shirt on our Tee Public store. Go to tpublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Leave a message for us using the Speak Pipe link on our blog. Opening and ending music generously provided by Ray Norrish. Thanks for listening.